Godzilla and Kong are back at it again. Because the previous movie made a whole lot of money. I mean, because a new threat emerges in an evil ape named Scar King and his ice-breathing monster Shimo. Can Godzilla and Kong learn to get along to stop these two vile enemies? Friends who know me know I am a fan of both Godzilla and Kong. As of now, I have seen every Godzilla film ever made, both Japanese and American versions. I have seen all the King Kong films, as well as countless other giant monster films. When it comes to the MonsterVerse, there has been an inconsistent tone, with the 2014 film Godzilla being realistic and serious, the sillier Kong Skull Island, and then the two borderline sci-fi films, Godzilla King of the Monsters and Godzilla vs. Kong. As for this film, the tone is more consistent with the last two films. All these factors in mind, I can safely say that this film is fine. The director, Adam Wingard, is a big proponent of movies where you turn off your brain and have a good time. There are a lot of films that claim to be that, such as the Transformers franchise, the MCU, and even the 1998 Roland Emmerich Godzilla. My problem with this notion is that there are good ways to do that and bad ways. When we blur the lines between having fun, insulting the intelligence to an absurd degree, or even just not being entertaining, the idea of turning your brain off can easily backfire, at least for me. I'll do my best to explain why it felt like that for me, but I should flat out state I didn't hate the film. I don't even think it's really bad as a giant monster film. My problem is that I have seen better giant monster films and better mindless stupid popcorn films. I really hate the dialogue in this film. Almost every character talks in this painful expositional dialogue that doesn't seem like things people would say. Rebecca Hall's character explains to the teacher of her adopted daughter Gia how she is all alone. She is the last of the Iwi tribe. It doesn't feel like it flows naturally. Okay, maybe that one's not too bad, but how about when Hall is translating an ancient stone tablet and this ancient civilization apparently worded everything like someone from our time period? I'm sorry, but for a franchise that originally started out fairly serious, it did annoy me. Already, I can see the argument. Well, the original Godzilla film started out serious and then became campy. And you know what? You're not wrong at all. While I do have fun with the goofier Godzilla films, my tastes lie in the darker approach. For the most part. Or at least a healthy medium. I don't know. Either this movie went too far or I'm just spoiled because of how much I loved Godzilla Minus One. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm illustrating my points well enough, so let's at the very least talk about the best aspects of the film, the characterizations of the two lead monsters. I do love the personalities Kong and Godzilla are given. I liken Godzilla to an old, angry, territorial cat. Hell, he even uses the Roman Colosseum as a bed and curls up like a cat in a bed. Kong is also fairly grumpy, but he, a giant monster ape, has an arc of being lonely and on a desperate quest to find a lost family. So yeah, that aspect I liked, but what about the new monsters? What about Scar King and Shimo? I didn't really care for them. Using an evil ape to fight Kong is a great idea, but we don't spend enough time with Scar King in the film to really see his menace or to even care. The same thing can be said for Shimo. Again, a good idea for a monster, something that breathes snow and ice, but barely in the film. And what else is barely in the film are the fights. I mean, they are there, but aside from Kong and Godzilla's fight in Egypt, nothing really stood out to me. In the end, Godzilla x Kong The New Empire is exactly what I thought it would be. A cash grab. Our last film made a ton of money, so let's make another one. I'm not going to complain about the human characters, because even I know that's not why we're here. But I wish the dialogue was at the bare minimal tolerable. I also wish the enemies had some more screen time. This is a tricky film to review, because these types of movies are down to preference. Do you like a serious approach to giant monster movies, or a cheesy approach? I'm in the middle, but I do tend to lean toward the darker, more serious approach. And again, I will fully admit, I might be biased because of the last Godzilla film I saw, and the fact it made my favorite film of the year. That said, I will recommend this film as even I, a stone-cold critic like myself, enjoyed seeing these characters on the big screen. But I only recommend it as a matinee. Thanks, this is an OMM review. This is OMM, signing out.